Hey, today on Woodworking with Wes, we have, we have a special request. We're going to answer a question. Um, actually, several questions and a request. You remember we did a video showing these two, we called them high-tech finishes. We learned afterwards that it's called Saru's finish. We did another video that showed the process in detail of how we got these two finishes. And we had several requests on, can I redo an old kitchen and make it look like this? Well, I really didn't know. So we did some investigation and some experimenting. I went and I bought an old golden oak door and drawer face just off of a, of a remodel job. Now, a little bit of history. You know that I've talked about the fact that I've been a cabinet maker for many years, 45 years. I built kitchens exactly like this for 10 years, 30 years ago. This is something that, you know, you know you've been in the business a long time when you start remodeling your own work. Anyway, this is a kitchen that looks exactly like kitchens I did a long time ago. When we were doing these kitchens in Golden Oak, oak is a great wood. I love oak. We did a lot of them, like I say. It's a great wood to work with. It machines nice, it sands nice, it holds up really well, it's very durable. And these kitchens that were done a long time ago, well taken care of, last a long time and still look good. But the golden oak has kind of gone out of style. Even though some people still like it, it's still a great finish. I don't have any problem with golden oak, but trendy, it's not. So I went and bought some of these and I fooled around and I did a Ceruse finish. You can see these two drawer faces right here are exactly the same. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this door and we're going to go through the process that I used on this drawer face to turn it into a nice Ceruse finish, white with black glaze. So let's get started. We started off on our refinish job, we'll call it a refinish. We started off by just wire brushing, a good stiff wire brush, and just wire brushed it. Now, before I wire brushed, I took some lacquer thinner and I wiped out, wiped down my door to wipe off all of the oils and greases and things like that that come from use, years of use. I wiped it all down, cleaned it all off. Now we'll get ready to wire brush. And I'll show you how we wire brush. We'll just go through it. We'll wire brush this door. Then we'll take it to the paint shop and do the finish. I started off by doing the ends cross grain, and I'll show you why I do it cross grain this way. We started off doing it this way, like this, across the bottom of the door. Bottom rail and molding. And that takes off, you can see how it takes off some of the old finish. But what it's doing <clears throat> is digging down and highlighting the grain so that our glaze will hold. So we're going to go ahead and do this all on this door. Now, one of the reasons, like I said, we talked about doing the cross grain first. If we did a cross grain last, your scratches would show up when you did your glaze. So do your cross grain like this first, your rails, ends of panels, and then come down. So let's cross grain here, then you go through and you straighten out your wire brushing on your style stock, on the face of your panels, down the edges here, down your molding, and you do that in that succession so that when you do your paint and glaze, your glaze looks very nice, you don't have any cross grain scratches. So let's go ahead, wire brush our door. We've spent about 10 minutes now wire brushing this door, scrubbing really good and hard. I want to show you one thing. We had a dent in the door that was fairly significant. If we would have left that, 
that would have shown up as a big black mark with our glaze. So I filled it. Now I'm going to take the wire brush and wire brush away the putty. And now this is just going to, with the paint, you won't see the dent anymore. And when we put the glaze on it, it'll hide that repair that I did won't show up. And so if you have any repair work on your, on your existing kitchen, fill it, wire brush it, it'll disappear. You'll see when we get over to the paint shop. You'll never know I did that repair. We're all done wire brushing now. Off to the paint shop. We've just completed giving two coats of white vinyl uh, on our door. If you look real close, you can see the grain is highlighted by our, our uh, wire brush. This is where the glaze is going to hold. But we're going to go ahead and give this a soft sand now to smooth out our vinyl primer. And then we'll put the glaze on. Now, again, the vinyl primer that I use is ML Campbell vinyl primer and I have it tinted to a color that is specific for a job that I have. This happens to be a job that has the uh, color snowbound. They mix it to match the color that I choose but it is just a white vinyl primer by ML Campbell. The glaze that we are going to be using, it doesn't say also on the can because it, they mixed me just a quart. I was using Benjamin Moore glaze and I liked Benjamin Moore glaze but I was introduced to ML Campbell Furniture Glaze. This is a, a color that they've mixed up, black furniture glaze that they've made for me. I like it a lot better. So I'm going to be using ML Campbell Furniture Glaze from now on for all of my glazing purposes. So this is what we're going to use for glaze. So we're going to take a soft sanding sponge. We're going to sand our door. And then we're going to glaze it. Okay, we've sanded our white paint now. And the sanding sponge that I use is just a sanding sponge that I buy from my retail paint supplier. I use extra fine so that it doesn't scratch my finish. And I just sand it down so it's a smooth. You can see where it powders up on my hand. Now we're ready for glaze. Okay, I'm all sanded. I blew it off all the dust so that it would be nice and clean. Now, if you don't have a nice paint shop or a place to paint, just make sure that wherever you paint is well ventilated. If you're painting outside or in a garage or something like that, just make sure that you're well ventilated when you paint and wearing a ventilator mask if you don't have a really good paint shop. My paint shop is set up so that I don't have to have that unless I desire to have it. Where I was just doing one door and talking to you, I didn't wear one. But we're getting ready to glaze now. And I apply my glaze was just a little throwaway brush painted on very generously make sure you get down in all the grooves that's what we're trying to show off I like to wear gloves so I don't have to clean up as much And uh, just paint your glaze on there nice and liberally. I always paint my outsides first so that I can hang on to the door in the middle. And then I paint my middle last. One of the other things I like about ML Campbell Furniture Glaze is the drying time is much faster. 
The Benjamin Moore took several hours to dry. This only takes just about an hour to dry. So it speeds up the process. If you are doing multiples, you can get done much faster. Okay, now we're gonna go around and wipe, and I just use a paper towel to wipe my glaze. And we're not gonna take all the glaze off, we're going to clean up the glaze. But we're gonna try to leave a good coat of glaze because we're wanting our grain to stand out. Now see, there's our, we start wiping up and there's the grain starting to show. That's what we're looking for. Glaze also highlights the profiles on your style and rail set. We'll want to do that too. Now there's a trick that makes your white and black really stand out. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's first off, let's get the glaze in here really good. Okay. And now let's do the face of our panel. Again, make sure you get plenty of glaze on there so it gets down into those grooves that we spent so much time creating with our wire brush because that's what makes the grain stand out is the glaze in the grooves where you've wire brushed the grain. So, there's our panel. Like I say, plenty of glaze. All right, Put a paper towel. The reason I like to use a paper towel, first off, they're inexpensive, and when you get done using them, you just throw them away and it makes your cleanup much nicer, much easier. I use it for my stain and my glaze. Whenever I stain a kitchen, I stain and then I wipe it with paper towels and it's just always worked really well for me. Okay, now that's as far as we're gonna go right now. And you can see but that doesn't have the really pretty black and white that we like to show. The trick is, we're gonna let this dry, we're gonna come back with our sanding sponge, and we're going to lightly sand, and we're gonna sand away this kind of cloudy finish that's on top of the grain, and leave what is in the uh, the grain that we uh, wire brushed out and it will make it look much whiter and the black to much look much darker. Then we're going to put two coats of clear top coat over the top of it and our door will be finished. But now we've got to let it dry. We'll come back when we're ready to sand. We've allowed the glaze on our door to dry for an hour now and now we're getting ready to clean it up so that it's really white and really black on our paint and glaze contrast. This is the sponge that I was talking about earlier. I'm going to use a little bit different size of, or type of sponge. It's still just a sanding sponge, but it reaches into the profiles a little better. It's just another one that you can buy from your paint supplier. So let's get ready and let's sand and highlight our grain. So let's go along the edge here. Here's our edge profile. 
See how the white jumps out? Now, it looks like the black is disappearing, but what that is, is that is just a little bit of our paint sanding off into the grain. We'll blow that off with our blower, air blower, and that will take all of that sanding out of there, and it'll darken those lines up again really quick. Oh, look, man, isn't that gonna be fun? Look how that grain pops out. The glaze in our grain pops out like that. Okay. Let's do the other end, the cross grains first. Remember we talked about the cross grains. We'll do that even in the sanding of our paint so that we make sure we don't have any cross grain marks. I do that when I sand my lacquer and everything. I always sand with the grain. When I'm sanding my doors, after I assemble them, I sand the same way. I always sand with my grain, doing my rails and first, and then my styles next. And then on my panels, end grain, and then long grain. Okay, let's turn it here. Start doing the long grain. of our raised panel, same way, the inside of our style and rail profile, leaving a little bit of great glaze to highlight our profile. Let's flip around here, get the edge again. Remember how I always do the edges first and then the panel last? Same thing here. love the way this is turning out. It really is bringing that grain out. That's hard to believe that that was a golden oak door. You could do the same thing in reverse. You could paint the door black and put a white glaze on, or any combination, a gray paint with a lighter glaze, anything you wanted to do based upon color choices. I just had white and black as a choice to really highlight the difference. Okay, now, doesn't look like our grain's very bright right now, but let's take it over to our blower and blow off the dust. Okay, there we are after our initial sand. Now I'm going to sand it just a little bit more and see if I can get these places to be a little whiter. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, that shows up a little whiter. So we're just going to work on some of those wider spots there. Especially on the panel and on the face of the style and rails. Get the door to be a little whiter and the grain to be a little darker.
this last piece here working on those white pieces bringing out that white color even more a little bit in the panel profile there but I like the panel profile the way it is Okay, let me blow that off one more time and see what we got. Okay, I think we have it sanded enough, but from this to this, what a difference. All we've got to do now is spray a nice top coat finish on and that'll be done. Our profiles are highlighted, giving it a real nice glazed look. Our grain is brought out. The ceruzing is not so deep that it makes your door rough. It's a nice smooth finish. Oh, that is beautiful. I'd have that in my house. Let's put a cup top coat on it. Ta-da! We, we've sprayed our top coat and it looks beautiful. Now this top coat, we just used a lacquer, a spray lacquer, but you could use polyurethane or anything like that to put your top coat on. So whatever you desire to have for your top coat, I spray lacquer, so that's what we did. But that's what we've done. We've just got a beautiful finish. And to be able to go from an old golden oak kitchen to a very nice, Saru's finish, just wonderful. We had a lot of inquiries when we were doing our Saru's finish. We had a lot of questions, and one of the biggest, or one of the questions asked most often was, could you do this in your kitchen? And that's why we did this door, and yes, you can. And it will turn out beautiful. The cabinets being in place in your kitchen be a little more work, but you could work on that. That'll be okay. I want to show you one thing on our finish. When I sprayed my lacquer, I noticed that I have a little line where I send through my white paint. And I just wanted to point that out. You could put a little paint on your finger or a real small little artist brush and you could touch that up and that would disappear. I didn't see it until I sprayed my lacquer, but I just wanted to show you that, that that can be taken care of. Just pay a little attention to that and you'd be fine. But that makes a beautiful door. It would sure change your kitchen. If you have an old golden oak kitchen that you're looking for a change, there's your change. Works great. This has been a fun project and we hope we answered questions that have been asked us about whether or not you can do this. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Woodworking with Wes. We're gonna have some more fun.